The Boston Celtics 2024 championship deserves unequivocal respect, transcending criticisms of their opponents on their path to the title, as despite the wacky talking points downplaying them, their run represents a culmination of strategic excellence resulting in all-time superiority. Before getting to why that's the case, to break down the narrative from their harshest critiques, is Celtics legend Paul Pierce. This might be the most disrespected run of all time though. The narrative surrounding the Celtics is first round, they play Miami, no Jimmy Butler. Second round, Donovan Mitchell goes down. Third round, Halliburton. Sweep Indiana, 4-1 Miami, 4-1 to Cleveland. So the narrative is like, oh, they ain't played nobody, but Dallas, on the other hand, beats 350-win teams. Toughest road. They beat Clippers, number four seed. And by the way, Dallas had home court in none of those series. So you beat Clippers, you beat OKC, you beat Minnesota. Now you come into this series like, oh, well, Celtics ain't play nobody. Uh, Dallas to beat 350-win teams. Celtics ain't been tested. They can't beat Dallas. That was the whole narrative. What's the narrative now? The Celtics' final record between the regular season and playoffs of 80 wins and 21 losses ranks as the 13th best mark in NBA history. However, over those 101 games, Boston outscored their opponents by an average of 10.7 points per game, a mark that ranks fifth all-time, only behind the 72 Lakers, the 96 Bulls, the 17 Warriors, and the 71 Bucks. So in other words, the 2024 Celtics are one of the most authoritative teams ever, and Boston's success starts from the very top of the organization. From former president Danny Ainge drafting Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum in consecutive years, to current GM Brad Stevens completely reshaping the roster around the team's two top players, the front office work with this organization has been consistently flawless. Ethically building up this team around Tatum and Brown, first it was Stevens reacquiring franchise staple Al Horford in a trade that sent the now-retired Kemba Walker, the 16th pick in 2021's draft, and a second-round pick in 2025 to Oklahoma City. Just as significant of a move on the path to a 2024 Celtic championship, Stevens would send Josh Richardson, Romeo Lankford, a 2022 first-round pick, and a 2028 first round pick swap in exchange for Derek White at the 2022 trade deadline. Last summer, Stevens would also elect to trade 2022's Defensive Player of the Year, being Celtic fan favorite Marcus Smart, in a three team deal with the Grizzlies and Wizards, where Smart ended up in Memphis, and Boston received both Chris Stapp's Porzingis and multiple first round picks. Shortly after that trade, also in 2023's offseason, Brad would deal key rim protector and dunker spot weapon Robert Williams III, who made 2022's all-defensive team, along with 2023's sixth man of the year Malcolm Brogdon, a 2024 first-round pick from the Golden State Warriors, and an unprotected 2029 first-round pick to Portland in exchange for Drew Holiday. Stevens would also re-sign Brown, Porzingis, Holiday, White, and Tatum to multi-year extensions. Regarding Brad's 2022 trade deadline acquisition, this past year saw Derek White emerge as the pinnacle of defensive prowess among NBA point guards, showcasing an unmatched ability to stymie opponents and disrupt plays. His agility and anticipation make him a formidable shot blocker for his position, providing a rare defensive asset that few can match. The Boston Celtics secured an absolute bargain with White's re-signed contract, leveraging his defensive acumen to bolster their lineup significantly. This man's tenacity on defense not only shores up Boston's perimeter, but also complements their offensive strategy, making him an invaluable asset on both ends of the floor. White's ability to consistently neutralize top-tier guards solidifies his status as a defensive cornerstone, setting a new standard for excellence at the point guard position in the league. Derek made his second consecutive all-defensive team and finished eighth in Defensive Player of the Year voting. Once the playoffs hit, Derek elevated his game to a different caliber on both ends of the floor. White had 17 10-plus point games in the 2024 playoffs, good enough for 7th most among all players. 
The Bald Mamba had five 20-point games throughout the postseason, one of which included a monster 38-point performance against Miami, where his eight threes made were the second most among any player in a game during the spring. In terms of the Chris Stapps acquisition, Porzingis' tenure with the Celtics has turned out to prove why the narrative about the team having an easy path to the title is thinly veiled, given many have failed to take into account his foot injury, hampering him throughout practically the entire playoffs, was something the Celtics had to constantly deal with. In a triumphant return to the court after a lengthy absence due to injury, Kristaps Porzingis made an unforgettable impact in Game 1 of the Finals. Despite the scoring discrepancy on the stat sheet, where his dominant defensive presence should have credited him with four blocked shots but officially tallied three, Porzingis undeniably altered the game's momentum with his rim protection. Additionally, his 20-point performance off the bench not only showcased his offensive versatility, but also solidified his role as Boston's unexpected hero from the reserves. The fact that he hadn't played since the first round against Miami made his standout performance all the more astonishing, defying expectations, and demonstrating his resilience under pressure. Porzingis' journey back to the hardwood has been marked by setbacks, particularly his sideline status due to a serious foot injury that now necessitates surgery and a lengthy rehabilitation period. Despite these challenges, his determination and skill were on full display to kick off the finals, where he emerged as a pivotal figure for Boston. KP's ability to seamlessly reintegrate into the team's title run and deliver such a stellar performance displayed how his floor spacing is the perfect fit in Boston's system. Porzingis' standout contributions served as a testament to both his unwavering commitment and ability to rise to the occasion when his team needs him most, leaving a lasting impression on fans and teammates. While the Celtics getting it done as a collective unit will be what their 18th championship as a franchise is going to be remembered for, how Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown got it done as a collective duo is just as, if not more, intriguing. Tatum and Brown practically split the first option role, with Jason leading the team in scoring and Jalen's 52% clip from the field leading the way efficiency-wise. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown's selflessness in sharing the role of the Boston Celtics' number one option was pivotal in leading the team to a championship. Rather than competing for individual accolades, both players embraced a team-first mentality, recognizing that their collective success was paramount. Tatum's scoring prowess and Brown's defensive tenacity complemented each other perfectly, creating a dynamic duo that opponents struggled to contain. Their willingness to defer to each other in critical moments fostered a harmonious team environment, allowing other players to thrive and contributing to a well-rounded, cohesive unit. This mutual respect and understanding not only elevated their own games, but also inspired their teammates, culminating in a remarkable championship run that highlighted the power of unity and selflessness. We went highly in-depth on the Drew Holiday acquisition in my last upload a while back before my time off, and could certainly talk more about Drew going forward along with another pivotal Brad Stevens acquisition and Al Horford, whose legend status with the team heavily increased. Additionally, Joe Mazzulla becoming the youngest coach in 55 years to win an NBA championship is something we have to talk about in future uploads, and in hindsight, Joe was highly deserving of Coach of the Year, as he's been snubbed for that award in consecutive seasons now. For a highly in-depth breakdown of what Joe and other 2024 champions brought to the table, make sure you splash thumbs up on this video and subscribe to DFlow Hoops by hitting that sub box, as it would mean the world. Three of my five shoutout giveaway winners have been compensated for in what's my last giveaway competition on this channel. For whatever reason, the top two in JJD and Tim Edits haven't given me their contact info yet. To those two, if you don't want to drop your contact info, I'm not sure what to tell you. Anyone could message at DFlowHoops on Instagram and Twitter pretending to be you. So to prove it's you, like Irvin Guerra, Christian Moore, and Boston Haltane did, comment your info down below and I'll message you on Insta or Twitter. Thanks for watching and see you next video.